Francisco Diego, who's a lecturer of physics and astronomy at University College London. Francisco, really good to talk to you. Um, first of all, I'm very surprised to find out that China says it's going to put a man on the moon in six years' time. Is that right? I think they can do it. We have seen, as you have uh, described just now, a fantastic development of the Chinese uh, space program, almost flawless in many in many ways. I mean, there were some failures of some of the rockets at some point, but uh, certainly, yes, in the last few years, we have seen an amazing development of the Chinese uh, space program. So I think uh, it is, uh, uh, I think uh, maybe before 2030, we will see a Chinese astronaut walking on the moon, I think. Wow, and the US? Uh, well, the U.S. Has, is going ahead with the Artemis program, and they plan to land a, a man or a woman on the moon in a couple of years' time, more or less. OK, so the Americans have done this already, uh, and the Chinese obviously want that there's at least political prestige in doing that, in, sh in showing that they're as technologically advanced as the Americans. But cynics say that this is all about trying to mine what is on the moon and getting to the moon first to claim what is there. Do you think there's anything in that? Well, um, yes, I must say that uh, uh, it's, it's not, not just uh, prestige. I think it is important to, to, um, to really collaborate. I think China has been kind of marginalized by the United States because they are not allowed in this in the International Space Station. They have built their own Tiangong Space Station, which is working well. And I think this kind of uh, separation of different countries is very important to avoid that and to avoid the exploration of the moon and beyond uh, by independent countries that is going to be conflictive all the time. I think we have to find a way to implement international collaboration properly. Uh, it is very difficult, but it has to be done properly. Yes, as I answered your question, yes, there are a lot of resources on the moon, resources not to bring back to the Earth, but resources to rebuild settlements on the moon and to build spacecraft that are going to go beyond. Uh, it will be cheaper in a way to build spacecraft that will go uh, uh, to Mars and beyond from the moon, which, where the gravity is much less. And we have the right materials there to do so, to do some industries there. But as I said, it has to be a kind of global cooperation in order to do that, in order to make it safer and avoid this competition, which is very destructive and conflictive. Yeah, and I take your point about global cooperation. But just to clarify, you're saying that essentially they want to use the moon as a base to then further explore space, as opposed to mining what is there. There, 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 aren't, there aren't that many natural resources there to mine that you could bring back to Earth then that would be useful on Earth. Uh, well, I don't think that is a viable, commercially viable thing to, to mine things on the moon, to bring them back to the Earth. We've got plenty of resources here which are badly distributed, and uh, we have to recycle more the resources that we have here and avoid this wastage that we have. It will be very, very expensive to bring things back from the moon and, and then land them safely here on Earth. Uh, it's very difficult to land things on Earth going through the atmosphere with parachutes and all this kind of stuff, heat shields and all that. We have seen uh, uh, disasters, actually, with the space shuttle by doing that. Uh, so I don't think it is a viable uh, thing to bring things from the moon. We mine things on the moon in order to use them on the moon and to and beyond, but not bring them back to the Earth, I think. Really good to get your thoughts. Thank you so much, Francisco. Francisco Diego it's there from the uh, University of London. Thank you.